Okay. Hey everyone, it's Jamie from Independence Street Tarot and Seasons and Ritual, and I'm here with my good friend Helen, the Crimson Cadaverous. Hello. And we are recording this on September 18th, on Monday. Yes. Sometimes we record things on Sunday, the day before, but today we are coming in strong on Monday. Yes. And this is a big week uh, because we have the um, solstice, equinox. Equinox, yes. Equinox. Well, yeah. You know what I was thinking in my mind? I was going, don't say the wrong thing. Don't say the wrong thing. <laughs> well. Well. Yeah. Some kind you know of I'm human. Door. Right. That's how you know I'm human and not a robot. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so we have the equinox coming in. So let's go ahead and start with um Monday today. And we're gonna go over again, like you know, where the moon, how the moon is moving. Um and today the moon is in Scorpio. Yes. And, and actually it's gonna be in Scorpio for the first three days this week. So it's kind of like heavy, heavy Pluto energy. Which is going to bring that up, honestly, but I'll wait till we get to the equinox. Okay. So pin that heavy Pluto energy. Okay. So Monday, moon and Scorpio. Yes. It is 1045 here where we are. And so far, so good this morning. I woke up feeling good. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely been a good morning. And I think some of that may have to do with the fact that we've got kind of this like grand water trying that we started the day off with. Mm -hmm. um, between the moon and Scorpio, um, Saturn and Pisces and, uh, Vesta and Cancer. Okay. So Vesta is newly in Cancer, mm -hmm. um, and Vesta is our sacred flame. So like, she's like, kind of like bringing in the home hearth energy with the, being in Cancer. And to me, that like grand water trine is just reminding us to go with the flow and like, almost kind of like washing away some of that like rigidness that we feel like we have to like cling to things, push things like, you know, whatever. It's just like, nope, just go with the river, flow with it, go with it. Which is good because like we're flowing into fall. Yes. It's nice to have some liquid energy to get us into. Yeah. And I think some lubrication, I'm trying to say folks, some lubrication. Okay. Yes. To get us into fall. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have had enough friction. It's been hot as shit. Yes. I was outside this morning and I was like, it is like fall here. And by that, it's 89 degrees. But I'll take it. It was a little chilly this morning. I'll say it that. Was, yeah. Was nice. Um, okay. And then also, um, the moon of Scorpio will be sextiling Mercury and Virgo. Oh. Yes. So definitely making it easier to think about, talk about these things. You know, like there's something that you just need to let out. It's just going to, you know, it's not going to feel like forced. Yeah. Um, it's a good time to socialize as well with that. Which is great. My cat just brought in a gecko. Oh. I'm just going to keep going mm -hmm. with it. For the love of God. For the love of God. Kitties. Little murderers. <laughs> little murderers. Yeah. That's Cute funny. little murderers. So, um, so, but like, yeah, my cat's just flowing right into um, everything. It's yeah. fine. But this moon in Scorpio, I think that's good. You know, um, Scorpio, like you said, is ruled by Pluto. And that Pluto energy is still in Capricorn, um, which is that Earth. So it's nice to yeah. have all this watery energy working with that Earth, quite honestly. Yeah. Especially sextiling Mercury and Virgo. Um, Virgo is an Earth sign. We are in the end of Virgo season. Mercury rules Virgo. It's a lot, like you said, talking about where we are now, where we want to go. Oh. Yep. Um, I think a lot too when the moon is in Scorpio and the fact that it is trining Saturn and Pisces and Vesta and Cancer, it's almost easier to keep um to use discernment more. Because, you know, with that wateriness, it's able to say, okay, I get what's right in front of me, but I I'm focusing on what it is that I'm bringing in. Does yes. Yeah, absolutely. And it's definitely like, it's definitely like an energy of like, actually trusting your intuition, as opposed to just needing everything to be like spelled out for you. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, Tuesday, the moon's still in Scorpio. Yes. Okay. And we actually have, a, I'm gonna say, how often do we say a favorable T square, but I feel like we have a favorable T square. I'll take it. I'm claiming it. I'm claiming it, Helen. You say yeah. it, I'm claiming it um moon and scorpio opposition to jupiter and uranus mm -hmm. squaring venus and juno 
-hmm. So like, obviously, yes, this is challenging energy. This is energy that's, you know, there will be tension with it. But to me, especially because Jupiter is involved and because Venus are involved, they're totally trying to look out for our best interests. And they're like, here's some more fun. Here's some more beauty. Here's some more, you know, excitement in life. Embrace it. Yeah, like the challenge is almost to embrace those things. Like, I just kind of see Venus, like, especially with the square with Juno as well, like asking us to like kind of commit to finding that beauty in the world. We're like finding the beauty in everything that we're doing, that that's something that, you know, needs to be like a part of our a, a part of our lives. Right. And in the opposition with Jupiter and Uranus, I mean, again, Jupiter wants us to be, you know, jovial and all those things but you're honest wants us to look at things differently yeah it wants us to look at things differently and it'll move it in fast it'll bring it in quick yes it's like and again that same day we have a sun the sun opposite uh, sun opposition to neptune i can't talk mm-hmm. uh the sun opposition to neptune and i feel like that's like kind of just showing us all these areas that have maybe been clouded and clearing things up for us giving us some clarity so right. okay well oh, because i was going to say because um mercury is still in virgo yes right and so the sun is still in virgo and so when it's opposing neptune and pisces we're going to be able to talk about it a lot better yeah like you said exactly. giving us that clarity yes and i think there's a lot of clarity that can be gained on that day and i think it's just again you know, a matter of like kind of going with the flow that like when we feel this tension, not to necessarily resist it to be like, okay, well, I feel like maybe yeah, there can be some more beautiful things that I recognize there can be some, you know, more enthusiasm that I put into things, you know, maybe I can do that. Yeah. And maybe it's kind of being revealed to me at this time where I haven't been doing that, you know, before where I've kind of been like got the blinders on. Right. And like when that tension comes up, like you said, maybe we can look to see what is causing that tension, what story we have behind that tension and be like, do we want to keep bringing the story along? Because so far, and you and I have talked about this kind of off camera, but the first six months have been about like excavating and releasing. Yes. And so if that goes into that, that energy goes into this, that day on Tuesday, what's coming up? What's bringing that tension? Right. Right. Is it something that's like you always say, and you always say this, it's not yours to carry around anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, those are those things that like, as much as we're in a place, you know, with the moon where we're like kind of gathering, you know, um, energy and stuff like that, we're still always releasing. Mm -hmm. And there is something about Tuesday where we're like releasing something that is like that old, like almost like the old dirt that we've dug up that we're like, we can't use this dirt anymore. You know, like it's not good anymore. We just got to get rid of it. Yeah. And, and let uh, Uranus take care of that. Yes. You know, let and Uranus. Going to do a great job. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say about the energy on Tuesday? No, I think it's definitely just one that we're going to want to, you know, remain present for and, um, just kind of, you know, call on that Jupiter energy to the, remain optimistic. Okay, I like it. Okay, Wednesday, the moon is still in Scorpio. Yes, finishing up time in Scorpio. So again, first three days of the week, we got a lot of that, you know, heavy Pluto energy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think to me, the thing that, you know, again, we've got, we've got some really favorable things on that day with the trine with Neptune and the sextile with Pluto and the sun. But like, I really kind of like this square with Lilith and Saturn, Mm -hmm. because to me, they're kind of finishing up the work that we were doing the day before, Mm -hmm. you know, like um, with that T square. But then again, with Lilith and Saturn, Lilith only wants what's true to us Mm -hmm. and Saturn only wants what's stable. Mm -hmm. So like all those things that like aren't true to us, aren't stable, we're having the challenge on that day to be like, all right, let go of it, get it out. And that's great because then the moon will move into Sagittarius. Yes. Which I find very interesting because Sagittarius is a mutable sign. Right. And Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. So again, we're talking about that jovial Jupiter energy that we need to bring in. And anytime the moon goes from Scorpio to Sagittarius, it's always such a shift because Scorpio is so intense and, you know, mysterious. And Sagittarius is like, hey, let's go party. 
Yeah, Sagittarius is that fire sign. But I, and, and I find it interesting too, because Jupiter rules Sagittarius, like you're saying. So we're still really working. We can't get away from the earth energy. We just, no. you know, and that's not a bad thing because everything has to work and move together. Um, exactly. I feel like a lot of times when we, we used to talk about astrology, it was very segregated. It was very separate. Like all the elements were just fighting and warring with one another. Like who was going to be element supreme and and i feel like you know now we see them no they all work together like they're elements like right we're full of different elements and we all work together um yeah. and so i find it interesting that the moon then moves into sagittarius which is mutable the sun is getting ready to move into libra out of a mutable sign so it's still like mm -hmm. it's just not pulling the rug out from underneath us it's still like keeping us on this um good track yeah, there's good clip. some stability with that, definitely. Yeah, and also like you and I were talking uh, also before um, on above camera, um, time's been very weird. And like, and I don't say that all the time because sometimes like time's really, but I swear to God, like this whole weekend has been a time warp. Did you hear the planes go over? Oh yeah, because they, yeah. they came from here and they went to your area. Now. Yeah, yeah, it was wild. Um, and so, And so I feel like, you know, we're on, we're on Wednesday. This is, um, we're moving towards the equinox. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've, the moon's moved in Sagittarius. We're starting to get that fire. Like, okay, we can start to see where we are now. Because as we were getting rid of the first six months of the year the astrological year that you were talking about it's really interesting that you bring that up because that basically means we're taking the Sagittarius moon pretty much into the equinox and it's almost like it's burning off all that stuff mm -hmm. like just kind of like that you know like what do they call that like when the like the spaceships come back into the what is that called I know back into the atmosphere yeah but there's it's that like, some kind of like burn off of the fuel from all that because I think yeah. in a way we're still like kind of carrying around some of that energy from that too because it's required us to like create a lot of energy to just kind of move through it and so now we're like I think a lot of us I've talked to a lot of people that kind of feel like almost like kind of racy and jittery and we're just like there's something that has to kind of move out and I really feel like that Sagittarius moon is going to help us kind of like burn like be the burn off like the rocket burn off and what we're talking about here, guys, because it is, we're talking about from the midway of the astrological year. So from Aries to uh, Libra, to the equinox, it's about six months. So we're talking about like when we came into Aries to where we are now, we've been doing a lot of excavating, a lot of moving out. And now, um, you know, and we talked about this before, at least I have, I know like a lot of times when this new energy comes in, we're like really agitated at first, but then we get to, you know, get into the vibes good vibes but I feel like now we're at a point where we can feel the good vibes now first yeah. instead of getting really agitated and so that's what we're referring to when we're talking about burning this for uh, this stuff off and time being extremely extremely weird yeah well I mean Saturn's in Pisces so that doesn't help no Saturn yeah it's trying to make it um like you said stable so let's move into Thursday um Thursday, the moon is still in Sagittarius all day. Yes. And we actually have another grand trine that day. Wow. Yeah. But it's a fire trine. So okay. again, burning stuff off. Yeah. Because uh, we've got a fire trine between the moon in Sagittarius, Venus and Juno in Leo, and Chiron and Aries. Mm -hmm. Which to me, I feel like, especially with Juno being involved in there, that's almost like committing to a new healing journey. Or committing to a new part of our healing journey. Yeah. And and I want to say, like, I, I, again, when we always talk about relationships and stuff, I always say, like, committing to yourself, you know? Yeah. Like, and I know a lot of times when people are like, a new journey, but I just went on such a long one with myself. Yeah. Okay, you did. But now let's say you're committing to the new journey that you're showing up as this new self. It's, it's right. not still just like, I mean, by now we've got a really good idea what pushes our buttons and these things and what we need to leave behind us. Okay. But now we're experiencing them as our more of our masculine and feminine showing up together as our mm -hmm. authentic self. Okay. So now we go on this journey more healed. 
You yeah. Know? And that's huge. That's huge because we have been doing the work and it's not going unnoticed. If not. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think there's some aspect because again, a, a grand trine is always going to be a favorable energy. Like it's kind of just like a flow of whatever the element is like that energy just all kind of like flowing together. Yeah. And to me, like this, you know, this is definitely asking us to, to, yeah, like make the commitment to heal ourselves more than like trying to, I guess, heal everything else. Yeah. Because the more you heal yourself, the more other things will heal because it needs to do what it needs to do without our interference. Yeah. Um, So I definitely think that's a really favorable energy on that day that like, you know, might get us a little fired up, but like, we kind of want to go with that flow of that fire because it's burning off the things that this isn't my shit. Ah, Not my shit. Yeah. I definitely think we're gonna be saying that on Thursday. Yay. I'm here for it. Right. And we also have that same day. We've got the sun trining Pluto, which again, all that excavation work we're doing, it's almost like shining a light down on it and being like, look at all the work you've done. Look at how much. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Good job, guys. And let me ask you this, okay? Because I've been trying to like, but we keep talking about Pluto. We had Scorpio moon ruled by Pluto. Sun in Virgo on Thursday will try Pluto and Capricorn. When is Pluto starting to station direct? Isn't it coming out um, pretty soon? Yeah, October. Let me get the exact date. October 10th. Just so less than a month. Yeah. Right. So I feel like this is another reason why Pluto is starting to come in. And I apologize to our listeners that we're going to be talking about it for the next three months. I mean, three weeks or so. But when this big, when this planet, it's out there, but it has a lot of energy. When it starts to slow down in order to switch another direction, it starts to become very prominent, you know? And so Mm -hmm. I can't, I see it's the 18th today. So the 25th and then that'd be two weeks so like three weeks away about three weeks away okay so you've got fair warning i'm going to be talking about this for the next three weeks until it turns direct well you know i'm never sad about talking about pluto but i know all day long so so know that pluto is in the background and pluto is in capricorn and capricorn is an earth sign like i said i can't we can't get away from these earth signs in a good way right so Mm -hmm. Um, because that is changing. I mean, it's just switching everything about the way we work, about the way we use money, the way we see money, Mm -hmm. the way like all these, um, you know, the union strike, the auto workers, right. They're saying, Hey, why are you making this much money? How the hell did we get that far apart? You know, that's, that's all being played out here. I'm going to keep it. A week. lot of that is Pluto and Capricorn, definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay, so Friday. Yes. Do we make so, it? Do we make it to Friday? Yeah, I know, right? Okay. Um, yeah, I like Friday because I feel like Friday and Saturday kind of play into each other. Okay. Um, Because we've got the first quarter moon on Friday once the moon moves into Capricorn. And that to me is like... um. The moon moves out of Sagittarius and then into Capricorn. Yes. And then, so yeah, we're going to have a square with Neptune and the sun. Um, So we'll have a square with Neptune when the moon is still in Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. Moon will move into Capricorn and then square with the sun. So a couple couple different square aspects with the moon. And can can we just talk about that really fast? Because the moon in Sagittarius, when it's squaring um, Neptune and Pisces and the sun in Virgo, right? Um, Virgo is now at its last degree. The sun is at its last degree in Virgo. This is a sign of mastery. Mm. So really see what comes up at the beginning of this day. And like, if you guys are like, oh, wait, I just remembered it's mastery, you know, whatever during the day, but start thinking about that because that square is going to come in and Virgo is really going to give you great ideas, great energy on how to work with the square that's coming up. I really do think that. I agree. And I just want to correct myself. The yeah. sun will not be in Capricorn when squaring the moon. I said that wrong. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's okay. I just want to make sure for our listeners, I said that wrong. So Neptune will be in Pisces and then the sun will be in Virgo still. So it'll actually be a T square. Okay. 
And that moon in Sag, you know, it's still, um, it's still fire. It's still mutable. It's still, okay, let's get through this. Yes. Well, and also trining Lilith, the North Node and Eris. Right. You so know, stability. And, and I think now as we move through all this stuff, the, the more that we hold ourselves accountable, the easier our lives get, right? Because it's not this big, long story, you know, like, especially like working with a lot of people and myself included with, um, fucking gaslighters and um narcissists right it was like so hard to like they're not gonna they weren't holding themselves accountable so then mm -hmm. we had to make up these big long stories about how well this is how I am and I'm not perfect you know I'm not perfect but I can do that you know it was like a lot and yeah. so as we keep cutting out these narcissistics and gaslighters like it's really easy to hold yourself accountable because you're talking to yourself and not a crazy person yeah and, and I do mean that like because a lot of times we talk about accountability I think people get like stressed out like super stressed out but it's because what was modeled to us for such a long time was just holding trying to hold people accountable that were bananas banana towns. yeah but well that didn't that, hold themselves accountable essentially that's all that is right and so the more that we start showing up as our authentic selves and holding ourselves accountable and laughing at our own jokes um you know, life becomes fun again, right? Because yep. you start to notice like, oh, that's that person. I'm not going to get sucked in to that fucking bullshit rule. Rin. Sorry for the digression there, but I really feel like this is all working in because I want people to start seeing accountability as a good thing and not like yeah. a fucking bummer. No. And that's, I mean, I think it's great that you bring that up because I know you're talking about Lilith, but yeah. I also think about Saturn in that same way with like accountability. Yeah. Where like a lot of times, you know, Saturn got read as, you know, this, the great malefic basically, because yeah. he's the one that would like come in and hold people accountable. And it's like, if you as a people feel that being held accountable is the most horrible thing that can possibly happen, there's something wrong there because yeah, that means you're not, you just don't have that solid foundation of like reality, basically. Right. That's a good way to put it. And it really is like Saturn brings in the reality. And I think a lot of times, and especially now that he's in Pisces, which is, you know, like dealing with, I don't want to say the non-reality, but kind of like the other world. Yeah. So to speak. like, he's kind of bringing some accountability to that, that there's been a lot of like wishy-washiness and people just kind of skating by. Right. Because and not being held accountable. Right. Because again, and I know I'm going off this again, but again, how did we get to a point in our uh, lives that CEOs are making 600%, 600 times more than the average worker. Something yep. wasn't being held accountable for a very long time. Yep, exactly. For a very, very long time. Because something like that doesn't happen overnight. No. You just wake up and that's suddenly happening. That happened right. over decades upon decades and even further if you really think sure. about the setup for it. But I mean, again, 100 years ago, things like that weren't really happening. Yes, there was you know, wealth disparity, like we know sure. that, but not in the sense that somebody would make that much more than somebody just because. 600%. Right. That just doesn't make sense. I was telling my mom, I was like, those are numbers. Like when you're telling a story to your friend and you're like, I don't know, it was like a million percent. Right. You know, I've been like making, yeah. <laughs> except this time the number was real. Yeah. Okay. All right. So is there anything else you'd like to say about Friday? No, I just think definitely that first quarter moon is kind of, kind of help, like almost be like, again, the last rocket fire burn off of the Sagittarius energy to get us into the new season. Okay. And the new season arrives on Saturday the 23rd. And you and I were talking about this, that Libra season starts the 23rd. That is our equinox. And having a season, an astrological season start on the 23rd is extremely late. It is. It is. Most of they start 19th. I always say even like the 19th, like 19th through the 21st. Yeah. Right. This is, this is late, definitely. And we were talking about it off camera that it's almost kind of like because this last season, this last six months has been so intense and so much, so much work has been asked of us, so many new things. It's almost like it needed to be a little longer. It needed to just be like, all right finish this all out for real, you know, You're starting something new. Stuff. Yeah, whatever. Um, and two, like, it's important to know, 
Um, and also, I think it's important that people are really starting to pay attention to the seasons. Mm-hmm. Like, I really do. I get that Walmart already had their Halloween shit out in August. I get it. But I still feel like it's hitting differently and not the same. Yeah. Not the same, you yeah. know? Um, so I really think too, like, okay, this is the equinox. People are starting to wake up. I was like, okay, oh, this is the fall season. We're really starting the fall season now. Right. So, well, and I think the thing, oh, I wanted to mention kind of about the equinox um, is it, the word equal. So, you know, because it's like the idea behind it is like equal, like night and day. Right. Scientifically, it's it's not quite that, but we'll just go with that, you know, symbolically. Um, Symbolically, it's like, you know, equal parts day and night. And again, it's like a time for us to actually like try and balance things out because it's Libra and it's the scales and it's, and in a way, like, I keep thinking about what you brought up about like all the like earth signs and like that earth. And I'm just like, I'm getting like an imagery of like dirt on a scale. Almost like, you know, and we're trying to like kind of balance out like, I don't want to say the good dirt, the bad dirt, but like, nope. you know. But you could even say balancing out the, um, I mean, you could, yeah, but you could say like accountability, right? You could yeah. say masculine, feminine, you could say um, bullshit versus reality. I mean, right. there's a lot of that. So when the scale. But it's becomes- almost like kind of balancing out all the stuff we dug up because we dug up a whole bunch and now we got to kind of like be like where does this go what are we doing with this how do we you know get back to a level am i taking these delusions with me Ooh, that oh nope gotta put that back because it want to keep that scale balanced yes so that's yeah like- there's, there's a lot of like balancing energy coming in which i think we need because again i feel like we've kind of just been like yeah you know, and I- I- and I've been saying this honestly for a few years. We gotta fucking pick a lane, but I really feel yeah. like we we're gonna start picking some lanes. Like really. yeah, I like, think so too. Yeah. Okay. So the moon in Capricorn. It's Saturday the twenty third. We are entering Libra season. It is the equinox. Yes. Um, Venus and Leo will try and ch- Chiron and Aries. That yeah. They- and that I think again, that's a beautiful energy to release, like victimhood. I feel like. Yeah. releasing like that need to like almost cling to like our victimhood status as like part of our identity or something am I going to put that on my scale Ooh, I'm going to put that back on the other side of the scale it can stay there yeah. Yeah. exactly we don't have to uh, being a victim is not our personality no no and it has been well and it has been woven into the fabric of our society for eons this isn't just something <laughs> that came up and I mean go back to the crusades go back to people conquering people go back to all those things you know like i think we have a really good handle on it and how the story of victimhood and being a victim has i mean it's 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 i mean it's there it's in our psyche we need to own it and i think it's really interesting now how um in politics a certain faction of people really dive into that victimhood story and everyone else is like what the you're not right. a victim you know um and so when that starts to be held accountable those bullshit stories of that faction that's empowering because then it starts to show us um as a psyche as a as, as, as a planet okay now i'm talking about planet things that victim mentality can change right we can rewrite that story in people have been conquered that shit's real like all that stuff's real um, mm-hmm. so we can actually spend time healing that sort of victimhood yes real that needs to be talked about that needs to be healed instead of constantly being gaslit by I hate to say fake victimhood but I don't know that's what I'm going to call it fake victimhood of super mm-hmm. wealthy people being like you should feel sorry for me right the, the people who are being held accountable calling it a witch hunt that's like no, you're the people that would have done the witch hunt. Like, right. Yeah. Right. Trying to put that narrative back to themselves. It's like, nope, we're not doing that anymore. Right. And that's huge. That is huge because it allows us to take that breath. It allows us to take that time. And it really allows us to focus on the idea of where things honestly have been and people have been, have been victims and we can heal that instead of constantly being distracted. Um, 
because when you get gaslit and you get distracted, you don't get to heal what needs to heal because you're constantly fighting that. And that is a, that's been a great way that they've been able to divide and conquer. So bringing it back to Libra season, bringing it back to those scales, the scales of justice, us balancing out ourselves, us balancing our energy, healing ourselves. Yes. Um, Venus and Leo training that Chiron and Aries, Venus, the divine feminine, how we love ourselves, um, Leo, that masculine fire. So we got that uh, masculine, that feminine and masculine and it. It's training Chiron and Aries and it's starting that new conversation. Yes. Where, okay, okay, let's heal this. Let's go. Also, right. bring healing to all sorts of things. Just whatever, put it out there. It'll, it'll get healed. That's really beautiful. Yeah, it is, it is a really beautiful day, I feel like. And then we go, and then we move into Sunday. Yes. The moon will still be in Capricorn, still working on this. That Capricorn moon is a great moon to have for moving into an equinox and moving into a new season, Libra season. Yep, because it, it's it's all about work and it's all about getting stuff done. So yeah, I definitely like that moon in Capricorn there. And then later on Sunday, the moon will move into Aquarius. So then we can just all get weird. Yeah, that's fun too. I yeah. like that. And then we'll have a trine with the sun. So it'll just be like this, you know, flowing of, you know, fun, airy energy. So, but weirdo, weirdo time. Mention, before that happens, yes. when the moon's still in Capricorn, we've got a conjunction with our friend Pluto. Mm. So, so, yeah. Oh, that duh. Moon and Capricorn will be that conjunction with Pluto makes sense because they're both at that level. Yes. yes. So I really like that. You know, because again, we're going through this time where we're like trying to rebalance, you know, deal with the excavations, like kind of move out of the old, move into the new. And, you know, if we've got that conjunction with Pluto, Pluto is just going to amplify that. Pluto's just going to, you know, be like, all right, well, here's all the shit. You know, we're not hiding any of it anymore. Here it is. Now you can deal with all the shit, you know, yeah. and do whatever you need to do with it do whatever you need to do with it if you see it and you want to leave it there and you bless it fine if you want to take it with you upgrade it to where you are now fine if you want to move into a new direction fine you know however you guys decide to do it is is correct yep but make that decision the right. waffling back and forth like i don't know oh uh, that's what makes us uh banana town right pick a and lane decide we were talking about the day before with chiron and the victimhood we've got mars opposite chiron again or not again obviously again yeah. but um we've got mars opposite chiron on sunday and to me that's like giving us the power to release the victimhood yep. you know that we have the power we have the drive to do things we don't have to be the victim we can yeah. just be done with that yeah raise your voice okay yeah. And then, like we said, later in the day, the moon will move into Aquarius. So now Aquarius is an air sign. The sun is in Libra, which is an air sign. Um, so this is like a good, like bringing in a lot of uh, air, right? So we had a lot of water at the beginning of the week. Um, still water and earth. Mm -hmm. and now we're moving into air to bring in to work with this. So I think that's really beautiful, you guys. So yeah, start I think this is going to be a really big week. And yeah. I mean, we always say that, like, I feel like we should just, you know, that's our tagline. I think this going to be a really sweet, yeah. but um, just keep, keep, you know, pile it on. So, yeah. Uh, but I definitely think this one is a good week just for rebalancing, for just kind of releasing some stuff that we know isn't ours and like taking accountability for ourselves. Mm -hmm. A lot of that, taking accountability for ourselves and just... And part what of that, we have to do to move forward. Yeah. And part of taking that accountability for yourself is saying, I'm not going to bring this old shit with me. Right. I'm taking accountability for the fact that that's not my story. I'm taking accountability that this is where I am and this is where I'm going. So that's right. also a good way of taking accountability. It's not saying like, um, always, always saying, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. It's also saying, this is where I am now. I'm taking account of where I am in my life and that's where I'm going. Because like yep. you were saying, uh, watery energy at the beginning going with the flow 
we move into a new sign and then like, oh, now all the new ideas start coming in. That's that air, right? That's mm-hmm. that cosmos. That's those new epiphanies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, friend and friends out there. Thank you for listening to this week. It's going to be a big, it's going to be a big week, friends. It's going to be a big one. <laughs> um, I might come on and do something for the Equinox. You will put your stuff up on uh, your Instagram like you do daily. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. And of course, you guys, if you ever want to do a session with me or Helen, you can always reach out to us via Instagram or our YouTube channels. And then I have my websites too. So like and subscribe. I think we have to say that because it helps with the algorithm. Not sure. Just going to throw that out mm-hmm. there. <laughs> but if not, have a great week. Happy Equinox. Happy Equinox. Yes. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.